You ever wonder why we're born? Just to suffer. <laughs> I, suffer. <laughs> no, I thought it was pretty clear. It was to go through doors. Aw, oh, shit. I need to call one of these episodes Doors and Corners, don't I? Doors and Corners, Corners and Doors. Corners and Doors. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus slipped out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. Pants. Pants. Thank God we got out of there. Oh. And that these pants are very good and worth remarking on. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah. All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. Oh. Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clear air, and with each one, he could feel his body begin to calm down. I just thought of something. What did you just thought of? So, from a meta perspective, the route we took, Junpei seemed really, really insistent on taking Jun with him through that door, right? Yeah. Like he was worried something might happen to Jun. I wonder if something happens to Jun during this scene, and one of the differences we're not in, like... No, no matter which one of these two doors you go through, Junpei is not able to do anything about it. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. He inhaled gulps of clear air, and with each one, he could feel his body begin to calm down. All right, let's go. Okay. They nodded to each other and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Damn it. None of these open. They're all locked. How about that one? The final door sat in a corner of the hallway. Did it now. <gasps> Doors and corners! <laughs> You're right! Oh my god! Let's hope this is the door with the prize. Well, this one loops them <clears throat> back, right? Junpei grabbed the door handle, was about to pull it open when... A voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. There was no doubt. The voice belonged to... Jumpy! Huh? Hey, p- hey, bestie. What's up? Uh, he spun not around. Much. There at the other end of the hall, Junpei saw human figures running toward him. Three of them. June? Santa? Seven? Hey, what's up, new best friend? <laughs> Old best friend? New best friend? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Have a good time without me? <laughs> you thought I was going to die, didn't you? <laughs> uh, uh, don't worry about it. I'm good. <laughs> they stopped short in front of Junpei and his companions, gasping for air. Hey, what are you guys doing here? What? But we didn't... Uh... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey, guys, could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of a small hallway. A small way that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. Hey, on the wall? A map of the ship's interior. It says, Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then. Door 7 and... Door 8. Yep, they both eventually end up at this hallway. In fact, yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door nine. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Using math to figure that out. Good job, Seven. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door nine. That's how the non game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. Wait a sec. This leads to... He looked more closely. His surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. We may as well go. Yeah? As one, they all moved back toward the door Junpei had only a moment ago been ready to open. Oops, almost forgot. We should keep this. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall and put it in his pocket, followed by the others. Well, Junbei, there's a great map of the ship's interior you've got there. <laughs> I do love collecting maps of the ship's interior. <laughs> the six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward, took hold of the door and spoke without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm going to open it. They nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. 
and then got on the floor. And then everybody walked the dinosaur. <laughs> now, is Ace going to be there or not? They poured through the doorway and into the room. Without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. I knew it. They were just where the map had said they would be. We're back. In the hospital room. <sighs> I see. Wait, no, it was... Oh, I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. Six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight, huh? Oh, that wore off really quickly, dude. Solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory. How do you know what's in there? Oh, no, they were just catching Ace up. Okay, okay. okay. No, no, sorry, that's not sus. Okay, he's just... They caught him up, and now he's recapping it for the audience. So, we, okay, we know that he's up to date. And then met one another on the hallway after opening your respective locked doors, huh? He looked like anyone might after only just waking up, but it seemed that his brain was working well as ever. He had managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each other's te each team's report. At any rate, it'll feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. I said I was sure you'd come back for me, but oh, uh, I didn't think it would actually happen so soon, though. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. I love how he makes a big dramatic gesture of sacrificing himself, right? But we know he full well that he's ready to, you know, get cutthroat in order to get himself out. If our theory is correct, which I think it must be. But I think it must, like, maybe mathematically, I'm pretty else. sure. The, the part that made me certain was when he stole Lotus's bracelet. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, because that, with that and the only other bracelet being a nine, it, like, that, it just makes sense. Well, we saw each other again, and we ain't dead, so I say that's good enough. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Here. Seven tossed something small and metallic toward Junpei. Whoa. <laughs> nice catch. Jeez. He caught it and found that the object was a key. I see. So this is Jupiter. On it, someone had engraved a symbol very similar to a four. He looked over at June, who nodded back. It had to be the Jupiter symbol. I'm going to let you hold on to that, all right? Yeah, on it. Junpei tucked the new key into his pocket. So, how many unused keys do we have now? There's the Earth key we found in the laboratory. The Saturn key card we found in the kitchen. And the Jupiter key you just gave me. And what key was it that Ace that that um, Ace would have gotten out of room two? I no longer remember. I no longer remember. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember if we actually. Yeah. Oh no, he wouldn't have gotten it because he sent Snake in to die. Right. Okay. Never mind. Because he, he wouldn't have gotten the key out. Mm. Junpei ducked the new keys into his pocket, and then June spoke up. I, for one, think we should make a serious consideration towards eating each other for sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> it's been several hours. <laughs> it's been several hours, and I think that personally, Ace looks like he has the most meat on him. <laughs> he was already willing, right, <laughs> to give. So, uh, am I? Am I crazy here? I'm not. I, like this makes sense, right? <laughs> Pick me up, Junpei. <laughs> Ah. Uh. Thanks, Jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> the Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door in the end of that long straight hallway, right? <laughs> straight. Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Then next to the stairs. Wait. They were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy with her words. What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. It just lead us back to the big hospital room. Yeah, but with a new key in hand, isn't that important? Do they know that? They each got an. They each came back with a new key from their puzzles here. They just collected them all together. Yeah, it's perfectly possible three wouldn't have one. I don't think that's the... No, I don't believe that that's the conclusion. They've come to the conclusion that, oh, two of the three doors here we went into had keys at the end of them that opened up other doors later on. 
Maybe we should grab the one from door number three since it just leads us right back. Yeah. Right, they, they've I've... gone through other doors that didn't have a key. Yeah, but those also led them forward. These ones clearly looped back around for a reason. Maybe. Anyway. There's no point seeing what's on the other side of that door. There is a point. At least there is for me. There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at Seven as hard as she could, just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There wasn't a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover and muttered a cough to apologies under his breath. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. Clover nodded once. The next person to speak was Ace. Uh, very well. I'll come with you then. Had a nice long rest. Think it's time I was up and about again. Oh, really? Oh, really, buddy? Yeah, you will, huh? Hmm. So, uh, Seven, you help me, won't ya? Ah, uh, me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. Four, one, seven, twelve, one, two, three. Looks like Seven was doing them, too. At last, he gave up. Damn, Will, huh? Wait, no, that's you. <laughs> Damn, well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. So I'm going with you, huh? Yeah, yeah, you are. All right, let's get moving. And so it was decided that Clover, Ace, and Seven would discover what lay beyond door number three. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful, all right? Whoa, didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. Lotus, I think, put together what Ace is up to. Don't let it go to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. The rest of us can't open the nine door. Ah, uh, the truth comes out. Seven nodded as if this answer made much more sense and pulled the rever on the lead. The rever on the... I've been doing that a lot more lately. And not, like, intentionally. Good Just old like... spoonerisms. Right? Okay, we're off. The door opened and an ace, clover, and seven jumped through it. Yeah, you would be eager to go through there, ace. Six, seven, eight. After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. All right, we should get moving, too. Huh? Uh, get moving. Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. Well, it'd be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. And then, anyway, that's when the water slide turned on, and I was like, wow, where did we even get one of these for a party this fancy, Mr. President? <laughs> oh, I get it. We're going to see if we can get anywhere with the, the uh, interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes, if we're lucky, we might even find Snake. Oh, no. It really feels like you were meant to play one of these routes first, doesn't it? Probably. Probably. <laughs> they were at the end of the hallway, lined by individual hospital rooms. And here's the Jupiter symbol on the keyhole. All right, Junpei. Open it if you'd please. Yeah, on it. Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Junpei sucked in a breath, held it, and opened the door as quietly as he could. <clears throat> Inside was exactly what he expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom, with a massive central staircase. Great. Back to the beginning. You sure this is a good idea? Oh, what do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Yeah, there is. We got the other key. Yeah. Of course there's a reason. Man, sometimes I can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Huh? This. Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card? And the Earth key? I'm lost. Santa cocked his head to one side like an inquisitive bird and looked at them. After several long moments during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, Jun took pity on him. Don't you remember, Santa? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on A Deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it. I th I'm pretty sure, you know, Earth, that's where you live, <laughs> at the North Pole. <laughs> it's very cold up there. <laughs> are, you, are you cold with that outfit? Rather. <laughs> so the two keys that Jumpy has... Should let us use the elevator and the door on A deck, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
June smiled, pleased with herself. And so did Santa. All right, I got it. Let's get started then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Then you guys should take this key. So they're going to search Earth and we're going to take Saturn. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Well, I'll have to fix that in a moment. Uh, okay. Right before, okay, branch point, huh? Good to know. Junpei handed the Earth key to Santa. Decided that their initial search should be brief. We have no idea what's on the other side of these. So don't go too far. Just search for ten minutes and come back. Plan decided the two teams split up. Sorry, split it up. Junpei and June headed for the elevators. There's a card reader right next to the left elevator. Then let's try out the Saturn key card. I'm going to try out your face in a moment. All right. Looking delicious. <laughs> Could absolutely eat that with some ranch dressing. <laughs> a light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. It looks like it's working now. All right. Now, how do I call the elevator? There's a single button to the right of the elevator door. Oh, it only has the upside down triangle on it. I guess there's no up button. Well, we may as well try pushing this one. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motors. The elevator car moved down. I've got an up button, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it opened. Look, Jumpy. Jun's voice was excited, but Junpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened. Let's get going. He grinned at Jun and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Wait, wait, wait. What? I, I'm not really, I, I just, oh, oh gosh. Junpei was at something of a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? Jun was probably afraid of. They could only go down. Hmm. She was afraid because the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. She, As he thought about her, Junpei realized he hadn't seen the elevator's A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. Come to think of it, the lower floor, D deck, is completely underwater. An elevator heading to a submerged floor. That is pretty scary. Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Oh, well, yeah, I guess it did. Did it open right away after you pressed the button? There was a motor noise, like it was moving, then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, take a look inside. Junpei jerked his head toward the interior of the elevator. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. Oh, you're right, they totally are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Now, I'll just put one foot inside the elevator and look over at the buttons. Oh, there's only two, E and C. All right, I'll push E. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. E. E. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. E. 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 I think I can hear it opening on E deck. <laughs> e. Okay, that's done. Do now you think they, I can get all my E refill down there on E deck? Absolutely. Uh, now I'll just press the button again. A few moments later, the elevator returned. Jinpei, you're not really easy to phase, are you? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Looking very intently. <laughs> hmm. I'll crack that nut yet. <laughs> Yep, not a single drop of water to be seen. See? Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest just a little bit. Jun, however, still looked confused. What does that mean, then? How can e -tech be safe if D-Tech is full of water? Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-Deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. Here, let me show you. He pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Wow, it's all so clear when you put it like that, Junpei. <laughs> wow. I see, so this is why the ship hasn't sunk, huh? The shape of the inside keeps it from filling with water? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Junpei continued talking as he closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So, I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, all right? Um, but, uh... Come on, just do it, all right? He gave Jun's shoulder a reassuring squeeze, then hopped onto the elevator. He pushed the E button and the door began to close. Jun looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision. When suddenly... I'm coming with you. Huh? At the last possible moment, Jun dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Hey, wait. Junpei jammed his finger against the open button, but it was too late. <laughs> Stuck with me now, bitch. <laughs> ah, crap. It closed. The door had shut and he and Jun were in the elevator and it was headed down to E-deck. He was so surprised by Jun that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited him on the E-deck. <laughs> It'll be a treat. <laughs> I can't just let you go alone, you know. Jeez. I mean, it's a big first step, right? <laughs> it's a very tough decision to make. <laughs> but I support you, and I need you to know that, all right? <laughs> the elevator stopped and the door slid open. I promise I'll stop this at some point. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm never <laughs> stopping. They tentatively stepped out and looked around. It looks normal. No fish going about their fishy business, or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. Huh. Oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around her nervously and then... Ah! Exhaled. Y you're right. It's not flooded at all. I don't know why I was scared about that. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Junpei thought about that for a moment. We'd probably die. I can eat you first, though, right? <laughs> Don't be so casual about something like that, all right? It's an important decision to make. <laughs> At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay, good idea. Now then. Junpei glanced around the room they'd found themselves in. First thing he noticed was a thick... A set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Iron bars? Well, we can't go over there. Okay. Then maybe. In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Junpei found an opening. Well? He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. Hey, it looks like there's a long, straight hallway down this way. Huh? Straight? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Something's written on the door at the end. Wait, is that... <gasps> Let's check! Oh my god, we finally found the Upside Down 9 door! <laughs> we can go through if we're upside down, right? Absolutely. Junpei and Jun set off, some, set off down the hallway at a brisk clip, somewhere between a run and a jog. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in a bright red paint. Six. I knew it. This is a numbered door! That's the number. Sure is. I'm very good at pointing the stuff out. <laughs> High five me. Got him. Indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. But we can't do anything with only the two of us, can we? We better head back and let everyone know. All right. Junpei and Jun turned and headed back to C deck. Wait, what's this? On the way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. Is this the map for E-Deck? Wow, that looks a whole lot like the map for E-Deck. <laughs> I should take it with me. Huh, so you guys found door one. Then met back up with Santa and Lotus, who had explained what they'd found. Apparently there was another numbered door on A-Deck, just like the one on E-Deck, beyond the door that the Earth Key opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a one on the door. So now we've located two new doors, the six door and the one door. It is interesting that E-Deck wasn't flooded. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of E-Deck is safe. 
We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting, isn't it? You said the sixth door was there, right? Yeah. Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. It's still pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. Yeah, I wonder how long it took. Can't even imagine how much it must have cost. It would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yeah, it does make sense. That thought made them go all go quiet for a moment. Huh. Uh. Hmm. Uh. June bit her lip while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked a stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Um. Yeah? I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. June looked up at Junpei with large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, June, Junpei and I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? 8 plus 6 plus 5 is 19. 1 plus 9 is 10. 1 plus 0 is 1. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, everyone, let's go. Lotus's words were all the impetus they needed. Back to the large hospital room they went. The moment they stepped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. Hey, where the hell did you guys go? It was seven. Seven? Ugh. Uh. Oh, don't act like you don't know what happened, Ace. Ace was right behind him, and Clover was behind Ace. Although she seemed to be hanging back. What's wrong? It looked as though there was something strange about them. Seven had the look of a man who'd seen a ghost. Ace was just as pale, and Clover looked as though she was only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there, looking at one another. Junpei looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. What happened? What the hell kind of a question is that? Seven was trying very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him hard. His shoulders were trembling, and his voice was strained. Snake was... Snake is... Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away, his face twisted by... Junpei wasn't sure what. Instead, Ace spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. Snake is, uh... Snake is dead. He died just like the ninth man did. Huh. It was as if all the air had suddenly been sucked out of the room. Junpei felt his heartbeat quicken, and he realized he was having trouble breathing. <gasps> I know how he's going to spin this, too. He's going to be... Can be... He has the number nine bracelet as well, so he can open that door with just himself. But he's going to insist that, no, it had to be a pair of two of them, and conveniently, he is not one of those pairs that could make it work. Mm. Right? So he's going to insist it was what's one plus two is three, right? So it gets to... Yeah, uh, no, 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 because no, it's not him. Three, so uh, Snake is two, right? Yep. So two plus, it's not going to be plus one. It's going to be two plus, to get to 12, 10. So who who makes 10? Uh, Clover and Junpei, right? What? No, no, Clover and June. Clover and June make 10. Yeah. Um, Santa and seven, dude. Santa and seven make, make 10. And he's going to... Oh, Snake, you... Oh, not not Snake. Ace, you bastard. Thankfully, we're beyond suspicion on this one. That's interesting. Junpei felt his heartbeat quicken, and he realized he was having trouble breathing. He could feel a cold sweat beating on his forehead and neck. Jun, Santa, and Lotus looked the way he felt. All three were frozen in place, their faces white. My God, that's not true, is it? <sighs> we should make sure... Yeah, right, we should. They nodded to one another and headed for the number three door. Wait, not that way. What? Why not? They stopped short and turned to look at Seven. He was pointing at the door with no number. I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Where is... where is he? The shower room on the left side of the hallway. I put a room in there, too, to keep the door open. 
That means we can get in without going through the numbered door, right? Yeah, that's right. Then let's go. The, their new destination clear. Junpei and his companions headed for the door with no number. Once in the hallway, it was easy to spot the middle door on the left wall. This wasn't open when we passed here before. But now, just as Zevin had said, there was a broom stuck between the door and the frame, keeping it open. Well, let's keep going. They looked at it for a moment, then stepped inside. Oh no, it smells horrible in here! Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even Santa pinched his nose shut. Yeah, this is pretty awful. I feel like I'm gonna puke. It was just as bad as they said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air, so thick they could almost taste it. It was sour and smelled of fish, feces, and burnt meat. It worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat to pound against the entrance to his stomach. Ugh. He put his hands over his mouth and struggled to keep what little it was in his stomach where it belonged. Where is he? Where's Snake? They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There. There was blood everywhere, a few arms of the splatter reaching toward them as they walked in through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radial arms to their source. The body itself was hidden behind a divider. Soon, you should stay here. But... Please, just do me a favor, okay? All right? He didn't give her a chance to say no. He put his hand on her shoulder as if to shove her into the ground like a tent pole, turned and walked toward the end of the divider. I'm going in. Felt like an eternity for him to get in there. Ugh. <sighs> Santa and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. Junpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. Ugh. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton in time for Rose. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body was sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast ragged hole had been torn in the torso and what remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. Just like Ace said. Santa's voice was strained. Junpei suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. Looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. Oh god, the bone is coming out of his left arm. It's definitely an open fracture. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. The face, it's horrible. Yeah, you can't even tell who it is. Half of his head was simply closed, collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, white shirt, jacket with the yellow piping of the gray slacks. But the clothes are... They were all familiar to Junpei. No mistake about that. It's Snake. Lotus's voice was unnaturally deep and strained, and Junpei heard it catch in her throat. Man, they didn't even doubt for a second that it was Snake. I mean, what if it was someone else's corpse dressed up like Snake, huh? <laughs> and it did say half the face was destroyed. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Half the face was destroyed. And of course, there's no way to fake someone's face. <laughs> of course. The squeal of tortured, of tortured metal made Junpei's teeth curl. It sounded like the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, the goat, he never got used to it. Every time it put him on edge. It didn't help that there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. Mm. She sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly into her chest. Her eyes were blank and stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Snake was probably murdered. 
Chances are he was killed the same way the ninth man was. Seven lowered his voice, likely in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. So if we assume that it, they're going to make, um, they're going to, if we assume that Clover is above suspicion or that they will believe Clover is above suspicion in this, right? Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, mathematically, it was just the two teams we sorted out. Or 21 is also three. Can we hit 21 with any group? With Snake? Yeah. No, because that would make 19. That would have to have three accomplices. Yeah. Which but is, can we? Yeah, I guess. Uh, with the uh, why why is it so hard for me to do this um seven lotus and clover would do it yeah yeah like like there are ways to do it but i i find it less likely go oh, no because you need clover for that one could you do it without them seven uh lotus june would get you to 14 and 15 would be us okay yeah you could do it with three in a way that didn't involve Clover. Okay. Seven looked at each one of them in turn and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. Then they shoved him into it alone. And waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was all over for Snake, but he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonators only deactivated if everyone who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. Snake was the only one who went through the door. And then 81 seconds after he was shoved in, that happened. I see. So... That's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. That's a really clever way of hiding it, too. I have, I really feel like the route we did first was the one that winds up ex like explaining how this trick is done. Maybe. Yeah, that means we're looking at multiple perps here. Jinpei crossed his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up to look for the pots for the reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. Then that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yep. That means anybody could be a killer. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? June seemed shocked. How can you say that so casually? You're implying that one of us is a killer? Well, not just one of us. If I'm right, then at least two of us are murderers. Uh, why don't you calm down a bit there, Seven? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna aim by being so suspicious, huh? That's what Zero wants from us, you know. What Zero wants? Exactly. This game was set up by zero, wasn't it? Any game is a winner and a loser. Whoever makes it through the door number nine is the winner, and those who don't are the losers, right? And Zero's trying to make us fight against one another for that victory. Then you're saying that Zero's trying to split us up by making us fight each other? Yup. That's why we can't let ourselves fall prey to suspicion. You have to trust one another and form a strong bond of friendship, alright? Otherwise, we'll end up instead by Zero's manipulations. Then does that mean that the person who killed Snake... Yeah, almost certainly was Zero himself. <laughs> How convenient that you get to make this argument, huh? <laughs> if there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Now, I should be clear, I don't think we think that Ace is Zero. Hmm. I think Ace is just an opportunist who is being very cutthroat and trying to, you know, gather what he needs in order to get himself out in one piece. It's also certainly possible that this theory he's stating here is right. Maybe there is a 19th person, as it were. Maybe. Uh, uh, 10th, 10th person, person, as it were. <laughs> um, An unknown person X. Yeah. Who or is Zero on the is ship. one of them. Hmm? Or Zero is one of the other players. Right. But that's the... So what I'm... That's the theory oh, okay. that we I think yeah, yeah. means that Zero would have to have something to do with this. But it could well be... Zero is just some other person who's also on the ship. Yep. And has some way to open the doors. Yep. So 
We don't. We can't yet rule that out. Per well, se. I doubt. I doubt it's zero. Here's the thing. Like, because we talked about this, right? Right, right. Like, what the motivations of someone would that be? If I'm zero and I'm running a death game, right? Mm hmm. And I put all this work and effort into it. And I'm, and I'm there on the ship. I don't go and kill one of the people off myself. Mm -hmm. I want them to get killed by doing the puzzles. That's why I set up the puzzles. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. So people can die doing them probably or something. I don't know. Like, I don't... If I wanted to murder, just murder a dude, there are better ways of doing that. Killing pe off the people I got to play my game just seems counterproductive. So then I guess the question is... What's Ace get out of killing Snake? That is the one thing I don't understand. We know what he gets out of killing Lotus later uh, during the submarine route, right? Because Nine... Assuming that it's him. He, I'm almost... I'm convinced it's him, but yeah. Assuming it's him. Because uh, Nine, One, and Eight would make enough for him to get through the door number nine. Maybe Snake figured out what he was up to? It could be the case... Because remember, the ninth man before dying said, it was him, it was him! Right? He didn't yeah. say who it was, but the ninth man was trying to finger someone before he died. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that Snake, with some of the information that the rest of us aren't privy to, right, managed to figure out, uh, or managed to uh, figure out what Ace was doing, and Ace felt compelled to moita him. Mm hmm on this theory, Ace would also have had to be the one that found the chips for these, right? Because the chips weren't here to begin with. I forgot about the chips not being there, yeah. Ace would have had to been the one to find the chips for them. And this would explain why he can't tell anyone, because if he did, it would be clear that he would have had to put the chips in for the murder to happen. Got it. Yep, yep, that would do it. So that gives us an explanation for what happened with the chips that doesn't involve a, oh, it's just a checkpoint and Zero has to put them in, which I think was what I floated previously. Yeah, 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 okay. So I guess what we're missing then is the motive, right? Yeah. Like, why would he... Like, we know he's cutthroat. Uh, like, assuming that it is him doing the actions at the end of the submarine route we watch, we know he's cutthroat and willing to do a lot to get out on his own. Everyone else be damned. So, like... So what does he have to? The only, but it doesn't seem like he's here to kill wantonly either. Mm -hmm. So what does he gain from killing Snake? That's what we're missing. All right. So either Snake figured something out, or it was an opportunity. I don't because I don't. He doesn't strike me as killing for op, as an opportunistic thing. Plus, why would it be? Why would it be opportunistic? It just the bracelet's still in there, or yeah. a bracelet. So he didn't gain anything. Well, it was also From broken, it. remember? That's true. They, they made a point of mentioning that Snake's bracelet was broken. Yep. But it's still like, he didn't he didn't gain something from it. Right. So he it, doesn't, he, it doesn't seem it could be opportunistic if it's not an opportunity for a thing. Exactly. Like, he did take... Uh, in order to open the door, he, we know he has nine man's, ninth man's bracelet, so we know that he's probably checking. We, we think he we has think. ninth man's we think. bracelet. We think. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty certain, but yeah, we think. Anyway... Doesn't seem reasonable that he would have uh, killed Snake as well. I don't think so. Hmm. Good question. Junpei hadn't really considered that. If Zero killed Snake, then Zero's on the ship with us. Junpei? Was Zero still on the ship with them? We said, of course, last time we were at a similar cutscene here, but... Yeah. What do we think? We could try the other track. Let's try the other one. He wasn't sure. Something's still strange. Uh, what's that? Well, I'm just wondering about one thing. And, uh, what's that? How can you be so sure that Zero's on this ship? Ace's eyebrow shot up. Really, Junpei? I confess I'm a little disappointed. Usually you're, uh, rather sharp, uh, isn't it obvious? Wait, it is? This ship. Huh? Zero said the ship several times when he addressed us, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to remember to do this. <clears throat> First, this game is simple. Lead the ship alive. As if no doubt some more, the ship has begun to sink. If he uh, weren't here, he wouldn't say this ship, would he? Hmm. Yes? <laughs> Maybe this is one of those things that made more sense before translation. 
Maybe. Because this not. is not compelling. Yeah, it seems pretty flimsy. Be saying something like that ship or uh, the ship. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. I, I don't buy that. If I'm pre-recording messages to play over a ship, like, like I still, I still think it might be the case that Zero could be here. I'm not convinced he needs to be, but if I'm pre-recording messages to play over a ship, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you know, like I'm gonna be immersive about it, right? I don't know. It's it feels more mat natural to record myself saying this ship. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. I don't find this compelling, though. Not at all. Ace's explanation made perfect sense. <laughs> Thank you for informing us that it made perfect sense. Junpei felt a little foolish that he hadn't seen it himself. Still, he was left with a question, and it was one of no, no small importance. If Zero's on the ship, where is he? Suddenly, everyone went very quiet. The silence was cold and clammy, and Junpei could feel it crawling across his back or around his throat. Again, he heard the ghosting moaning rise. And a moments later, a person who looked more like a ghost than human appeared. It was Clover. She looked at the floor as she spoke, and her voice was a cold monotone. I think... I think Zero is one of us. In Tarot Bang? Oh! Ah! Every human body... In the, that's a really great turn of phrase that just... <laughs> Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffled rustling of breath. Eyes darted from face to face. One of those faces was the pair of their was the face of their jailer. But who would it be? Was he one of them? It's possible. Let's try the other one this time. Yeah. That that's crazy. Isn't this ship gonna sink in a few hours? If Zero was here with us, he'd be putting himself in danger. Why the hell would he do something like that? There's no motive. Clover looked up at Junpei and her face fell. You don't believe me? I just think Zero and the person that killed Snake are two different people. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> I'm perfectly willing to believe that he would come on the ship, though. Her eyes were so pitiful. The moment Junpei's met met them, his he felt his heart tighten. He didn't think what he'd said was wrong, but perhaps the way he'd said it had been. He'd been too insensitive. Clover had just lost her brother, after all. His death would have been bad enough, but she'd also seen the blasted wreck of his body. Junpei barely knew him, and the sight had been enough to make him sick. What Clover had felt, he couldn't begin to imagine. In the mental state she must have been in, it was understandable that she would look at those around her with suspicion. She felt everyone was against her. The least Junpei could have done was to try to understand what she was feeling. He felt ashamed of what he'd said. Perhaps, he thought, I should apologize. But before that apology could begin... Clover, I... Uh, Clover, I understand what you're feeling. You don't feel that you can trust any of us, right? Ace had beaten Junpei to the punch. <gasps> and now Ace gets to insert himself and get himself ingratiated with Clover. <laughs> he spoke to Clover. His face was calm and friendly. But you you had to understand, all right? The more we distrust one another, the further we fall into our true foe's trap. Zero was the one who did these horrible things to your brother. <laughs> it all just... All I need for you is to believe. Just believe the explanation <laughs> I put it before you, all right? <laughs> Do you want to let yourself be manipulated by someone who would do such a horrible thing? Mm. Clover didn't answer. She didn't even look at Ace. The whole time her eyes were on Junpei. He could feel Clo he could feel Clover's eyes boring into him. They were the color of a deep winter lake. Junpei saw no suspicion in them, only sadness. Then in that horrible silence. So can we circle back to like plan who we're going to eat first? <laughs> They heard a bell begin to ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. Santa doesn't look like he has a lot of meat on him. It's three in the morning. That means we have three hours left. Oh, uh, then we need to move now, right? Seven, Clover. I know how you feel, but you do understand right now that it's important we trust one another, don't you? Seven and Clover remained silent. Their eyes were looking at something somewhere else very far away. We gotta go. We have very little time left. These words put their feet to moving. They all knew where they were going. Our next destination is Mercury. Maybe you and June should check it out first, then report back to us. Should we? Should we fix the thing? We will when it becomes a problem, because I'm gonna have to lean over and do stuff. Okay. All right. Let's go, June. Right. Here it is. 
and sat bolted to the wall near the stairs that led to the casino in the kitchen between the two elevators. The Mercury Card Reader. We're using the card Seven gave us, right? Yeah. I found it when we were checking out the shower room. I think Seven said something like that. Anyway, let's see what happens. Junpei slid the card through the reader. The light on the reader turned green and made a tiny electronic noise. I guess the elevator works now? Jumpy, I know it's only the two of us, but let's do our best, all right? What's with you all of a sudden? Well, I'm just happy we were put together, that's all. Ah, uh, you know it's just for searching E-Deck, right? <laughs> yeah. Even so, I'm glad that I'm with you, searching E-Deck. Oh. First, we need to find out if the elevator comes up full of water. Just like we did before, right? <laughs> E-Deck. Sounds kind of like E-Dick. Got him. Got him. Oh, here it is. I knew it. It's not wet at all. Unlike... <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go. Once it had been checked for water, Junpei and Jun stepped into the elevator. Oh, look at over there. Nearly all of the buttons are destroyed. Yeah, only the C and bottom buttons can be pushed. Jun Junpei, you're making this too easy. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> We're on C deck right now, so the only one we can push is uh, bottom. Yeah. I, it's less funny when it's handed to you like that, actually. Ooh, well. I feel like I didn't have to work for it at all. <laughs> Let's try it out. I, I mean, yeah, I guess we could. I don't, I'm not really into it anymore. <laughs> it just feels too easy. Junpei hit the bottom button. The door closed. I'm going to have to find a different thing to bother you with, aren't I? <laughs> Slowly, they began to move downward. So, this is the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw that the hallway to their right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end, but not a regular dead end. Hey, over there. This is a numbered door. This is the eighth one we've found. There were two numbered doors on B deck near the central staircase. They were doors four and five. Three more in the large hospital room. Doors three, seven, and eight. And the door, oh. And the door we found on E deck, and the door Lotus and Santa found on A deck. So what door did they find then? Door one? Yeah. There was a six on door on E deck, and a one on the door on A deck. Four, Four five, oh. three, seven, eight, six, one. And now door number two stood in front of Junpei. That means... Do you think the next door we find? Yeah, I think so. The next one's going to be door nine. Despite himself, Junpei felt excited. There was something about that excitement that frightened him as well. Finally! Yeah. You don't look very happy about it, though. It's not that. I just hope nothing goes wrong. You're right. We should keep our fingers crossed. Let's head back. Okay. He did his best to put it from his mind and headed back to Sea deck with Jun. One, two, three, four. All right, seven pieces. The pieces of paper they'd folded up lay on the ground next to Junpei's legs. Everyone had written a paper pulled from Junpei's notebook in an effort to pull together a blind vote. Just double checking, but everyone wrote their code name and a door number they want, right? Yeah, just like you told us to earlier. Can't believe we're voting here. Why had they decided to vote that way? We need to make the whole thing fair, blah de blah This is a complicated plan, you know. Hurry it up, mister, I have a brilliant idea. They decided it wasn't fair to simply ask everyone at once. That would allow people to force others to go through certain doors. Yeah, yeah, quiet in the peanut gallery. And he had a plan. It wasn't a plan he wanted anyone catching wind of, however, so he did his best to act calm as he began to open and read the pieces of paper. All right, let's open these up. The first one says, Ace requests door one. Oh uh, yeah, I do. Would you like me to explain why? No, we don't have the time for that. Sorry, let's keep going. Well, all right then. You open the second one. Next is Santa. He wants door six. Yeah, that's what I wrote. 
Junpei continued with the third, fourth, and fifth pieces of paper. Clover wants one. Lotus wants two. And Seven also wants two. What? Wait a minute. There's no way I'm going anywhere with the elephant, man. No, there'd be no point to the voting if we let people change their choices because of stuff like that. But, but... Just give it up, Lotus. Plus, we don't even know if that's how it's going to shake out. It's not like I want to hang out with some exhibitionist grandma. I am not an exhibitionist. I am wearing clothes. Barely. So? Last I checked, that's not a crime. Maybe, but what about common decency? Oh, really? We're going to do this, are we? Nobody wants to have to look at a chick who looks like a half-naked raisin. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god, I am going to actually kill you. And then Lotus actually killed Seven. <laughs> and everyone was fine with it. The end. Lotus's hair flared out like the mane of an angry lion, and she roared with a voice that shook the walls. Uh-oh, not good. Let go! Let go of me! I am actually going to kill him! With some difficulty, Ace managed to restrain her. Uh, Junpei, read the rest, please. Uh, right. Junpei tore his eyes away and looked down at the sixth piece of paper. He opened it. June wants door six. Yeah, I don't really have a reason. Just felt like it. All the papers save Junpei's had been read. He did some quick calculations in his head. So, this was everyone's vote. Ace and Clover requested door one. This was the... Oh. This was the door on A deck near the central staircase. Seven and Lotus requested door two. This was the door on the bottom deck and could be reached by taking the elevator to the bottom of the ship. Santa and June requested door six. This was the door on E deck could be reached by taking the elevator near the central staircase shown. Then the door I should choose is... Uh, Ace and Clover request... Huh. So well, how, do, how does this add up? How does this add up at the moment? Ace and Clover is uh, five to get to one. They need to get to, t what, ten? So if we go with them, they get in one. Yep. Seven and Lotus requesting door number two. That's, what, fifteen? To get in there, they need to get to twenty. Oh, wow, look at that. So we can go with them to open that. But we've already been there. We're not going that that one. Santa June We've been through door two? Yeah. That was the one we went through on the uh, on the route we already did. Interesting. And Santa and June want six. Does that add up? Santa and June, that's three and six. That's nine. Add what? We're five. No, we can't go with them. Why not? Wait, doesn't that work? Because we're five. Yeah, so nine plus five is 14. Oh, no, that's... Yeah, we're missing out. Shit. Took him less than a second to run the numbers. He opened the seventh piece of paper and spoke. Okay, the last one's mine. I want to go through... What door do we want? I don't want to vote for six and see what happens. All right. I want to go through door six. Junpei flipped over the piece of paper. It read Junpei, door six. Of course it did. He'd written it after all. <laughs> That's a problem. Jun barely spoke above a whisper, but they all knew what she'd said. None of these teams will be able to go through the doors they want. Uh, Clover and I chose door number one. Lotus and I chose door two. It's not enough people to open a number door, however. The digital roots don't match up either. We've got similar problems. June, Junpei, and I want to go through door six. But our digital route is five. If we're going to open that door, we need a one. Damn it. What are we going to do now? <laughs> what are we going to do? Junpei crossed his arms and did his best to put his thoughts in order. The yeah, others followed suit, but with little result. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Eventually, Clover broke the silence. Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one with me? Her face was cold and flat, as was her voice, but her logic was sound. Hmm. Uh. Seven and Lotus looked at each other. Seven, eight, four is nineteen. One, nine, ten... 101. 
First problem resolved, Ace spoke up. Uh, what about me then? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teams just complaining that they didn't have a one? Uh, you mean I should join Santa's team? Clover nodded, her face still cold and emotionless. Her attitude and posture could not have been more different than the energetic girl of only a few hours before. No one seemed to be ready to contradict her. Her response was understandable given the horrible situation in which she had found herself, but even so... Oh, uh, I understand. I'll go through door number six then. If we do as Clover suggested, we can all pass through another door and no one will be left behind. The most reasonable solution. 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 is 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. 7, Lotus, what do you guys think? I don't have a problem with it. Me either. All right, then. We're good to go. See you later. Ooh, wait, Clover, don't move on your own. I'll be going too, then. Yeah, be careful. Uh, we should get uh, going as well. At last, Junpei and the other six had managed to separate themselves into two teams. Clover, Seven, and Lotus headed to A-Deck, where door one was near the main staircase. Junpei, Jun, Ace, and Santa, however, took the elevator to E-Deck. The ride to E-Deck was a silent one. So, uh, this E-Deck, huh? There should be a door at the end of the hall. All right, let's go. Santa's words jolted them into action, and they stepped out of the elevator into a long, straight hallway. Before long, they arrived in front of door number six. There it is. You guys ready? Yeah. Then let's get to it. One by one, they put their palms over the red. With a soft electronic noise, it authenticated each of them. The door opened, and all at once the four of them leapt through it. Hey, I found it. It's right there. Fortunately, the dead was located easily enough. This one had been placed quite close to the door they had entered through. They gathered around it quickly and hurriedly placed their palms on it for authentication one by one. Ah. Ha. Huh. Ugh. Huh. It stopped. Yeah, it stopped. The countdown had ceased, but Junpei's heart was still pounding in his chest like a frantic, thunderous drum. It felt as though it might shake itself up and out of his throat. Oh, yeah. I think I'd ever get used to that, huh? I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. You got that right. Once I'm out of this hellhole, I'm taking a nice long vacation. Yeah, I agree. With that, the doom and gloom from before was done, and the, moon turns, the mood turned somewhat lighter. All right, let's go. With that attempt at good humor, Junpei took a deep breath and began to walk. He jogged down the stairs at the end of the hallway and found himself staring at a large door. This door looks pretty heavy. But it's not locked. I'm opening it. He took hold of the bar that served as its doorknob and shoved it down. The room beyond stopped him in his tracks. It was jar- it was gargantuan. It was gargantuan, made entirely of metal. None of the accents of wood or tile he'd seen in the rest of the ship. This room was purely functional, but utterly tremendous. Whoa, what the hell is this? Santa got out a few words before the awe stole the, stole the rest of them. The rest were too stunned to offer anything more than gasps. This has to be the biggest room so far. The ceiling is pretty high, too. Uh, could be two stories, maybe even more. Oh, the space could be utilizing the entire length of the ship. What's that huge Kamaboko-looking building in the middle? Jun pointed to the massive building in the center. Kamaboko? Well, I guess that's as good of a description of it as any. Junpei and the others were standing on the scaffolding that crisscrossed the whole area. The proper term was catwalk, Junpei thought, although that didn't seem particularly important. I see stairs, so we may as well head over to them. Yeah, but this section's barely wide enough to fit one person. You're right. 
Nearby was a long iron staircase that made its way eventually to the floor beneath them. Whoa, you can't even tell the shape when you're this close. Let's check out the other side, too. They moved around toward the opposite side of the massive building, following the catwalk. The end said much as they walked, but they approached the building. Ace suddenly spoke up. Looks to be, uh, the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yeah, it's an old family recipe. <laughs> the thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. You see, uh, three round doors near the bottom? Coal is put into the hose and burn, which heats the water, which produces steam. Same thing that drives the steam engine. This one's simply somewhat, uh, larger. I see. Doesn't appear to be running right now, though. The entire room was silent as the grave. All right, let's split up. Then all of a sudden, Junpei ho 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 heard a noise behind him. He turned just in time to see June collapse to her knees. Uh, hey, what's wrong? Are you all right? He dashed toward her and wrapped his arm around her shoulders to steady her. Hey, June. It was then that he noticed. Oh, we went down the middle path this time. Chumpy. You, you're really warm. Is your fever coming back? Yeah, it probably is. But I'm fine. Please don't worry about me. I just need to rest and I'll be fine. Her voice was weak and forced, and it said a great deal more than her words did. Okay. Here, sit down. Careful. Junpei carried her to the nearest wall and propped her up against it. She sat her head back against... She let her head fall back against the wall, as if she no longer had the strength to support it, and drew a ragged breath. Thank you. Her eyes were empty as if she was having trouble focusing them, and even speaking seemed difficult for her. Junpei felt his hand fall beside... Ball itself into a fist and clenched tight, his knuckles whitening. He had to find a way out, and quickly... He turned and looked at Ace and Santa in turn. Ace, Santa. Yo. Right? They might not have shared the depth of his emotion, but they certainly shared his concern. All right, let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm going to get you out of here real soon. She managed a small nod before leaning back to rest her head on the wall. All right. Seek a way out. That I think we can do. I think we could do that, probably. The steam engine room, huh? Oh, oh, there it goes. All right. Uh, keep the mic warm for like two seconds for me. All right. We can't figure out why it's doing this, so we're just rolling with the mouse for the rest of this. Sound yep. like a plan to everyone? That's Are we plan. all cool with this? Okay, cool. A tunnel. It goes all the way across the ship. I'd say this is probably you to move coal from place to place, huh? Probably comes over there, from over there, and then the belt carries it down the tunnel and out here. So, if the conveyor belt was moving... Yeah, the cold will almost certainly come out here, huh? It's a square hole. Nothing in here. Oh, uh, look at the back wall there, though. See, three small slots. Terminals for some sort of connector, perhaps? You mean you think we're supposed to plug something in here? Yeah, perhaps. Look at that button. It's glowing orange, right? That's got to mean something. I guess press oh, I right. guess pressing it is the best way to find out if it does anything, Santa. Hmm. Nothing. Okay. Okay. This pillar goes up toward the ceiling. What about that hanging thingy down from the ceiling? Okay. Huh. Oh well. Oh, that's a whole new area. Okay. This is the huge oven for this boiler. There are three open areas in it. Jun Junpei, Do have you ever? Why do they call it an oven? When you oven the food? How about how to eat the food? <laughs> Junpei. Each of the open areas has a gear in it. You can't ignore me while I'm sick. <laughs> Stairs to the upper floor. They're connected to the boiler. That's another wheel. So each of these has a wheel, huh? Yeah, let's interact with one. And that one's silver. So silver, bronze, and gold. Uh, 
This gear is rusty, but it looks like it's still pretty sturdy. A golden gear, huh? It doesn't look like it was always golden like this. Well, then I imagine it was prepared especially for this game, huh? Looks like there's a door over there in the tunnel. Belt over there must be delivered the coal, which is then picked up and thrown into this door. The door appears to be welded shut, however. All right, so the door won't help us. Got it. Hmm. Okay. I do like the little detail where, like, there are superficial parts of just how the ship was run that have to be purposely disabled to not work for the game. Yeah. The conveyor belt runs into a sort of arched tunnel. A huge bronze gear. This has to be important. Cool. Okay, so that's all the same. Yep. Aside from its bronze. It's a silver gear. Do you think it's made of pure silver? No way. Silver's way too soft to use for a gear. It's got to be a steel or iron gear that's been coated with silver. Uh, shouldn't have called it a silver gear then. Shouldn't have got your hopes up. Were you thinking you'd haul this thing back? Nah, but I think Seven could probably carry it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So cool. that's the same. Okay, so that leads to a new direction. Hmm. Hmm. Or are we not reading out the... Oh. That's fine. We don't I, have sorry, to. Sorry, I got... I got thrown off because something fell over in a different room. Yeah, it's just something settling in our kitchen. It's fine. There are a bunch of wooden boxes over here by the wall. I already looked through those. There's nothing there. Yeah, you would. All right, and that also leads to an area. Okay. Moms, have a look behind us. There are a number of these little windows along the inside of this thing. I think you're supposed to put coal in through these, but they're welded shut. I don't think we can get these open. Okay. The conveyor belt comes out of an arch-shaped tunnel. Man, this thing is huge. I guess a ship this big needs something like that to power it. Uh, true, but I don't think a boiler, this single boiler this size could actually move a ship like this at any reasonable speed. At least three, no, maybe four of these. Huh, I guess you know a lot about boats, huh? Well, not really. It's just common sense, you know? This stuff is painfully obvious in the boating world. <laughs> oh, wait, so we're that's back the here. golden gear? We're on the other side. Yeah. Okay. I see. So if we move back this way, and then back this way. I see. Okay, so if we move this way, then. That's new. Oh, that just brings us to the silver. Okay, the, so we're closer now to the end of the hallway here. Look, Ace. It's some kind of snowman secret meeting. Uh, those are just bags full of sand. Use them as counterweight when you're lifting something with the pulley system. Man, you're too serious. <laughs> snowman meeting? That is funny, though. I think it's funny. There's a pair of wooden boxes here. There's nothing in them. Well, all right, then. So that leads up there. Oh, no. This leads up to a different thing. I guess we gotta. What's this? Bunch of levers. What's it do? This slider is down. Well, let's see if I can get this thing to go anywhere. Ah, oh, man. No dice. This thing isn't going anywhere. The three sliders on the left are down, but this one's up. Number lines engraved on these, huh? In fact, we're meant to do something rather specific with them. Junpei, why don't you move that slider down? Well, there's no harm in trying, I suppose. Uh, nothing, huh? Nothing happened. Maybe it needs to be prepared somehow? You're saying if we did something somewhere else, it'd respond somehow? Yeah, I suppose that's the one way of putting it. All right. Eh, nothing. Won't move at all. All right. I'm just double checking. Almost looks like it wants us to play a game of Mastermind there. So, oh, we can go up further. Yeah, what's up there? Uh, oh, hold on. Hmm. Oh god, this is so huge. Why is this so huge? What's around here? All right, this That's is where the we. Same thing. Yeah, this is where we came from. Okay. I want to go back to the screen real. Oh, 
back to the screen real quick here. To see anything else on here. Nope. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. That's fine. What do we got up here? Okay. Um. Over here. It's a catwalk over there. Yeah, if by catwalk you mean narrow strip of metal. Yeah, Junpei, you brave enough to cross that? You would have fallen. You do realize broken bones would be at least your problems, right? <sighs> I'd loot your corpse. There's another door, too. Yeah, it looks like it would be really hard to get there by walking on the scaffolding, though, you know? I mean, it's not impossible, but it'd be pretty risky. I think maybe we ought to look for a safer route first. Okay. I think that's part of the ship's structure. They're like ribs that support the hull. I really like the amount of work that went into placing the escape room puzzles within, like, a real structure. Yeah. I mentioned it earlier, but it's... Such a nice touch. Oh, hey, we can get to A, though. One of the doors on the furnace. There's an A on it. A! There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. All right, let's give this sucker a twist. Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. We should, uh, go in here. All right. Oh, uh, let's go. This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? Must be on the other side, yeah? Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt? Anyway, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we yet to investigate, right? Okay, before we go through the door, let's finish over here, how about? Sound good? Okay. One of the doors on the furnace, there's a B on it. I don't think we're getting to that one. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. There's a bunch of stuff in our way. This door over here. Hey, Junpei, where are you going? The only thing in there is a closed number door, right? Kind of pointless to go back, huh? Yeah, it sure is. Okay, so that's where we came in from. Okay. That's what's up here. Check one other thing. Because there was one other thing I wanted to check. Whether this is different, huh? What is yeah. up there? Oh. What is that? There's a thick iron door blocking our way. You think this is, uh... Yeah, I do. Looks like the exit. Looks like this door slides up into the ceiling. What is this? Oh, give it the policeman. I'd say must unlock the door to the left, right? There's a weird indentation on top of this thing. You think that that means you have to insert something here? I'd imagine so, yeah. All right, so cool. Yeah, sorry. I wanted to make sure we had seen everything there was over here first. All right. Cool. We got some gears. We got a pulley. We got a, We know where the exit is. And we have these levers. Okay. We haven't found anything else, though, so let's go through here. Oh, that just leads us back. Sorry. 180-degree camera rule, right? <laughs> I don't want to complain, but 180-degree camera rule. Well, anyway, looks like that's the pipe. Looks like the bottom connects to the conveyor belt housing. Then uh, coal must come out of this pipe onto the conveyor belt, huh? In other words, there must be a great deal of coal in that pipe. Number of boxes on the catwalk. I don't think we can go over there. Not an attitude like that, no. The catwalk? All right. So can we, like, go through these ones over here? There are a whole bunch of boxes in my way. I can't get through. I can see some scaffolding on the wall over there. I mean, we can probably... Uh, this supports and braces... This, this supports and braces the side of the ship. We might be right above where June's resting. All right, so they're going to want us to go through the C and B door? Yep. All right, let's... Oh! Yeet. The stairs back down should be on the other side of these boxes. You got an excellent memory, buddy. Use that to draw a map inside your head. That way you won't get lost. All right, let's... The catwalk. It's a hand-operated winch. Simple machine used to lift things up and down. You turn the wheel to pull up the rope. Junpei, why don't you turn the wheel? The wheel? All right, let's give this wheel a spin. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. God, 
Ah, shit. Well, that's going to be fun to deal with. I, uh, it's fine. Even when we got the controller unplugged, that's fascinating. So something yeah. else is doing it, but I don't have time to figure out what. Yep. All right. It's a wheel that seems to be part of the winch. There are some pegs on the back that look like they go into the holes on the winch. Cool. Good job, genius. You broke it. I didn't break it. It broke all by itself. Okay. Hmm. Damn, no good. These little shafts are too small for this big hole. That's what he said. It's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway, to be honest. That's the case then, uh... That wheel wasn't originally part of this winch. Then that means... Jinpei, I wanted you to know that I heard that one. <laughs> <gasps> okay, so that appears to be about all we got over there. All right, so where can we use this door? I don't this... know, but let's check out A. What do you mean, check out A? I'm oh, sorry, C. Oh, there we go. Is that the one we just went through? Nope. The hand-operated winch. Uh, there's no wheel to turn. Oh, yeah, I got the wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? Let's see if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit, like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good, I should be able to turn this now. Uh, good work, Junpei. Should be able to haul up the wooden box now. See the wooden box? It's uh, under the catwalk. Can you see it? Same for the rope on the winch, isn't it? Looks like there's some sort of a device in the box. Not sure what it is, though. Anyway, right, might as well turn that wheel now. Got it on ya. All right, I'll turn the wheel. What's this? Oh, what happened? This wheel only turns to the left. Only turns to the left, huh? That means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah, we can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that'll be a problem. Simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down, huh? I'll be counting on you, Junpei. Sure thing, no sweat. I believe the box has reached the floor by now. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. The box that had been only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor, come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt. June's down over by there. Junpei could see her still leaning against the wall as if she had barely the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see her heat rising from her body. Uh, she doesn't seem to be improving, huh? Macy's expression was inscrutable, but he'd said what they'd all been thinking. Well, of course not. She's not gonna just get better right away, you know? It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself that what he'd said was true. Uh, what could be causing it, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's gotta be exhaustion. Santa's response was confident and certain. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. If you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? So you're uh, saying we're abnormal, huh? Yeah. We're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But it does seem like a possibility, you know? They stood there for a few more minutes, no one speaking, until Santa turned, walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. Interesting. Because, yeah, we still haven't gotten to, like, why what Zero gets out of this other yeah. than, like, some shits and giggles, right? And they had posited before that this is, like, funded by a big operation. So what does the big operation get out of this, then? Mm-hmm. Quite unclear. Yeah. I guess the stairs down, right? All right, we got to go back through, right? Sorry, I got turned around for a moment. 
And the box was over there, right? Yeah. There's a pair of boxes here. That's is not it the there? right one? Is it behind us? Oh, it's there. Control panel for something. Well, we know where that goes. Some kind of machine. Maybe a control panel? For something. Maybe this hole is where the control panel goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. In you go. Brad. Dude, you did it. Everything looks all right. Okay, but what do we do now? Why don't you press the button next to it then? The orange one? Yeah, why not? All right, I'll do that. Pushing. Sweet, all sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And oh, yes, I think I just heard something turn on. Oh, what's that? What happened? Junpei, look, the conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt? Well, I guess it's done moving now. There's still a bunch of coal on the belt, though. It looks like a bunch of it got dumped off the end of the belt into that wooden box where we found the control panel. Coal. Coal, huh? Anything else to get from here? This is the control panel for the conveyor belt. It's covered in lights. The light in the button isn't on anymore. I don't need to press it. Okay. Since the belt started moving, it's transported quite a bit of coal. It all drops off the left end of the belt, right into the wooden box. Box filled with the coal. A wooden box full of coal. Guess there's really only one thing we can do with this stuff. What? A winch, rope, and hook. There's nothing hanging off it anymore. Okay. Did we find a place where coal goes? Was it uh, in... Oh, no, those were welded shut. Yep. I feel like something mentioned it was a place for coal. Was it up top? Hmm. I think it might have been up top. Try taking a look. Oh, God, I'm clicking on the stairs game. You know that. Can we turn around? Hmm. Hmm. Let's try going through B door again. Oh, was it? Oh, was it the shoot? Can we click on that shoot again? Okay, so that goes to the conveyor belt. Yeah, I don't know what we're meant to do with this coal. I guess I let's just keep sworn, looking around, huh? Yeah, I could have sworn that we interacted with something that mentioned it. Uh, what about what about um, so that thing? That we were just on that that landing. Can we go up there? Can we try hitting, uh, pulling that lever again. See if it does anything. It does. Okay. Uh, what about on the other side of the stairway? When we go uh, up from the other side. Hmm. But that doesn't help us. We can't like put the box on there, can nope. we? I, I I tried clicking on it, so no. I've got the thing in my hand, so. Hmm. Where does the coal go? Is there just something we haven't clicked on yet on the boiler? Because it seems what obvious that coal is for going in the coal thing. Do we put it back on the winch? No? The winch only goes one way. Jimpy, you really think you should be paying so much attention to the conveyor belt? I mean... Seems like no. So, clearly, there's something we do with the coal. Well, let's try... Uh, can we click around different places on the boiler or something? Because that's where coal would, coal would go if there were some place to interact with it. I yeah. Think. 
what was it like on the weren't we able to get onto the other side somehow yeah how did we do that here we go there we go how whatever cool there's a hole that'll let us put coal into the furnace. Maybe if we can get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. All you right. sure we're carrying that around for a long time, huh? <laughs> That's the last of it. No coal left in the wooden box. And nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into a cold furnace do anything? Oh, well, a man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke the furnace with coal, right? Which will heat the water stored up in there, make the steam, to then drive something else, right? Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine and drive the steam engine, right? Yeah, I guess that's the uh, gist of it. Yeah. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal, huh? This furnace is enormous, so we're going to need a whole hell of a lot more coal than this. Very well, then. Three of us work together. We should be able to fill it much faster, huh? I want to help, too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up. Uh, are you feeling up to that? Yeah. Yeah, right. You look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, all right? But, but, but I... No arguing. You need your rest, so you just stay there. We'll handle this. All right. I understand. All right, time for some manly work. Let's get this coal into those furnaces. Wow, we really are just... <laughs> All right, cool. You know you can get paid to do that. <laughs> Man, this is a lot of work. All right, things should be sufficient. All right, now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we going to light it? Uh, perhaps there's a device nearby that allows us to remotely ignite the coal? Take a look, shall we? Some sort of big... Uh, some sort of ignition device, huh? All right. So I bet it... I wonder if that's the thing up on the landing with the lever. Uh, I can't figure out how I'm supposed to light this thing. Jinpei, you thought of looking at the other side. You're right. I should take a look over there. Whoop. Whoop. Let's head... Let's head up to the landing. And pull that lever. Is this? I think it might be... Probably is. I think this is how we might ignite the furnace. That means that if we move that thing down... All right, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei, Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Oh, wow. There they go. The gears. They're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. So the this one is in the lower... Okay, hold on. Gold disc. Cool. Gold disc has a number of lines engraved on it. They got three colors here. Red, blue, and black. What do they mean? Okay, bronze, bronze disc. disc. Okay. Gee, I wonder where those go. You know, I was worried when we got this puzzle this was going to be like hellishly big and long because of how big the room was. I think the size of the room just inflated how difficult the puzzle was. Yep. It looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like it's the outline of three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe... Maybe if we put those three discs we found into this thing... Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, putting them in the wrong places? Uh, perhaps you have them facing the wrong direction or something? Rotate the disc to make some of the lines connect to one another. 
Hmm, well, no harm in trying. Okay. Okay, so we just want to get them in the center, probably, making a certain pattern? Yeah, hold on. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try. There we go. Yeah. The red lines on these discs. They form a nonogram. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. Yes. We found it. We found it. Yes. And with minimal controller issues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I uh, guess join us next time. We'll finish off this route. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Me too. This is really enjoyable. I really, like, I realized that there's like this whole genre of just like mystery adventure VN type games for the DS that I just missed back in the day. And I really wish I'd been into it because this, this would have been so cool to me growing up. I wish I had gotten into these earlier. <sighs> anyway, we'll see you all next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. Bye. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment, and subscribe.